A big part of growing up professionally for Annie Leibovitz was evolving past the idea of her work as a purely artistic endeavor, but rather a highly sought-after commodity that gave her power and agency in the world. I read in the early days you really were uncomfortable accepting money for photographs. <laughs> Why? Well, I felt I couldn't do what I wanted to do. I felt that if I was going to be, uh, you know, paid for something, that it was uh, suddenly became, uh, I had to do something for for the person I was photographing. I think one of the very first things, um, Sissy Spacek asked me to do her album cover. She, she did a country western uh, album and um, I was just a, a wreck during the shooting because I ended up saying, please keep the money. I mean, I, it's, it, was, it was difficult. It was, uh, I felt uh, I had to please her and it's really important um, that you please yourself. You so know? artistically you felt encumbered then, That's huh? right. That's now right. though, a day's work earns you a lot of money. Mm -hmm. uh, is it different now? Is it different always once you're established? Well, I had to find the right kind of work that made sense for me and for my work. I, you know, the American Express work and the Gap work were, were really extraordinary campaigns. And I, they really asked me to do my work. And, and they, they made it quite explicit. They said, we don't want to interfere. We want you to do exactly what you do. And, um, and, I, and I grew with that. And I learned to use it and to um, put it back into my editorial work. In her work with American Express, they allowed Leibovitz the freedom to push the conventions of advertising by creating bold campaigns that stood out in the pages of the magazines. Each featured subject brought an entirely new concept and energy to the photos, expressing their individualism and style. As the work with Amex continued over the years, the campaigns became less high art and more similar to glamorized snapshots in the life of the subject. This type of creative relationship was also mirrored in her work with Gap, a rapidly growing jeans brand from San Francisco that was hiring the biggest photographers in the industry to shoot their campaigns, like Richard Avedon, Stephen Mizell, and Herb Ritz. Her portraits for Gap included a range of characters, from movie stars like Winona Ryder to literary legends like Joan Didion. In 2006, Gap launched the Do the Red Thing campaign shot by Leibovitz, a revolution in how nonprofits raise money. Harnessing the power of celebrities like Red co founder Bono, the proposition was simple Can a t shirt change the world? This one can. 50% of the profits from red items went to the Global Fund to finance programs that help women and children affected by HIV AIDS in Africa. The next year, Leibovitz shot the Classics Redefined campaign. In 2010, Let's Gap Together paired people with the same profession from different sides of the globe. This campaign is, is very, very important and we realize that we represent our, our countries and we realize that it's bigger than both of us. I think it's a very interesting campaign. I mean, uh, East, West, I mean, you know, the world, is, the world gets smaller by the day. And at some point, the, the more communication, more we are connected to one another, uh, the more positive that is. I love the symbolism of what this shoot means because as we go into the 21st century and a new young generation, this represents putting the, the challenges behind us in the past and history and moving forward together in a way that, that, that we can build a world that, that is safe and that is free. Outside of the fact that uh, Gap is a brand that we both are very familiar with and support, you know, it is our collaborative efforts that make us stronger in music that make us stronger philanthropically, that makes us stronger as people. So when we do fill in those gaps in life, magic happens. The idea in this campaign was to simplify the look, you know, uh, very, very much and just, you know, see, the t see two people together from two different cultures. We realized the very first day we photographed, um, when we were bringing American uh, culture together with Chinese culture, it was very, very powerful. Everyone understood that 
it was something bigger than just photographing clothes. On the other hand, I think what's always been extraordinary about Gap and the clothes is that it, it's very democratic. Uh, Gap clothes, it's it's you know everyone can wear it. He saw that Gap is a American culture, very strong. So this Gap brought to the United States, it proves that the culture is common. Everyone can communicate. Gap 可能會影響咗國內好多唔同嘅人對衣服嘅睇法，因為 Gap 唔係一個好誒好好好名貴或者好咩，佢好 casual。誒、呃、中學生著、小學生著、誒翻工嘅著，即係呢個就係生活。即係從呢個生活裏邊，我會就慢慢覺得就係今日我哋兩個都我講廣東話，佢講英文，但係我諗好快咧就佢講國國語，誒、呃、我講英文。我覺得誒 Gap 他。当然，我觉得让很多可能看似有不同的东西，其实创造出来那种艺术是还蛮特别的。所以，呃，希望这一次的广告出来，可以让大家看到很特别的冲突性，但是有有一种和谐。We're getting a chance to work with Annie is one of the the great experiences, great honors of my life. 跟他在一块工作，我觉得非常就是自然，特别随便，就是。觉得就是把自己的东西发挥出来是吗？曾经想过，我说，嗯，如果能和他一起工作，应该是一个很兴奋的事情。对，没想到就 gap 就那个促成了这件事情。When I was a child going to school, I couldn't afford clothes to go to school, and when the Gap came along, they created clothes that became hip and cool, and everyone could wear them, and they didn't cost that much money, and it was powerful. The 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 look of What is fashionable doesn't have to be expensive. So I've always admired the Gap, you know, for that. But that being said, you know, it was a brilliant idea from Gap China to pull these two worlds together. I think Gap chose these people, then did this thing. So this year, I think Gap is pretty unique. Gap can be used in the future in the Gap can be used in the future in the Gap can be used in the future in the Gap can be used in the future in the Gap can be used in the future in the Gap can be used in the future in the Gap can be used in the Most people think of Annie's work for American Express and Gap, but Leibovitz had another client that shook the ad world by creating one of the most acclaimed national campaigns in history. That client was Milk. In 1993, Michael Bay, who we now associate with pyrotechnics in the Transformer movies, directed a commercial for the California Milk Processor Board. Ten thousand dollar question. It's a tough one. Who shot Alexander Hamilton in that famous duel? All right, let's go to the phones and see who's out there. Hello, for ten thousand dollars, who shot? Excuse me. I'm afraid your time is almost up. I'm sorry. Maybe next time. Got milk. Got Milk was licensed to the National Milk Processor Education Program in 1995, where Annie Leibovitz was brought to capture celebrities from different worlds: supermodels, athletes, TV, and film stars. The dairy industry started seeing a decline in sales starting in the 1970s, with companies like Coca-Cola and Pepsi aggressively marketing themselves as fun to consume. Milk Does a Body Good of the 1980s was ineffective in convincing customers to choose the healthier option. By the 1990s, it was sports drinks and companies like Snapple selling themselves as healthy alternatives to soda. So milk had to strike back. Market research on children at the time showed that they viewed milk as a boring staple. So the milk mustache campaign was designed to make milk more interesting and to emphasize its wholesomeness. When Leibovitz was approached to shoot the Got Milk campaigns for print advertising, she saw the power of being in such a ubiquitous campaign at a time where print magazines were thriving. The client was only paying twenty-five thousand dollars per ad, a paltry sum comparing to what these celebrities were used to getting paid. But the opportunity to be photographed by Leibovitz was something most people jumped at. All of the subjects had to be milk drinkers, so Whoopi Goldberg wasn't featured until 1999, when they ran an ad for lactose-free milk. I 
can't help believe, but believe that these um, vehicles that I'm working within, that there's, there's such wonderful um, ways to get work done that I, I, I believe I'm doing good work within a commercial landscape and, and that the opportunities are too interesting and the work is too extraordinary. But it's the tension of that. Am I being too slick? Am I doing this? Am I doing that? Or is this, you know, uh, good? Um, it's, is what creates the work. Annie's milk mustachioed portraits can be viewed as a nearly two-decade ledger of who was top of mind in popular culture.